Hi, I'm going to show you a neat little feature in multimeters you probably weren't aware of. Now, most multimeters these days have a uh, capacitance mode, either um, single on the dial like that or uh, switch through, um, typically on the ohms range like this, and you can measure uh, your cap like that. No worries, okay, we've got our 10 nanofarad standard capacitor here, and uh, it measures that. No worries, except for this one. I don't know why this fluke is out. But anyway, they have reasonable capacitance measurement in them. It's not great. It's usually only like a couple of percent accuracy at best but it's quite handy not as good of course as a proper LCR meter where you can um, select uh, the different uh, test frequencies but uh, you can also measure and not, not only capacitance but inductance um, as well and resistance and ESR and quality factor and dissipation factor and all sorts of stuff uh, that you get with a nice LCR meter now there's only a few multimeters on the market that will actually have uh, inductance measurement built into them and they're, they're pretty rare but a little known feature of uh, multimeters is that they actually test at well not um, specific fixed frequencies like a good LCR meter does this one can measure 100 Hertz 120 1 kilohertz 10 kilohertz and 100 kilohertz but multimeters also test at frequency as well which means you might be able to press them into service for measuring inductors as well let me show you so we'll have a look at the actual waveform, the test signal that's actually being used. Now, of course, for an LCR meter, we're getting, of course, a perfect uh, sine wave like this at the perfect one kilohertz that we select. And of course, a 10 kilohertz, and we can go to 100 kilohertz, and we can test down at 100 hertz if we want to. There you go. So a perfect sine wave at a specific set frequency is what you get with proper LCR meters. But if we swap that over to a multimeter, in this case got the 121 GW, you can see that it's actually got a triangular shaped waveform here. Um, and that is at 100, you know, just a little bit over 100 hertz here. And if we change the capacitance, it's actually the test frequency is going to vary with uh, the capacitance. But not all meters work identically like this. And then if we try the fluke here you can see that that's once again the same one nanofarad but it's higher frequency again it's testing at 4.3 kilohertz it's not quite a uh, triangle wave there and then if we change the capacitance you can see that the test frequency uh, changes with the capacitance there and then if we try the uni t 61e uh, plus here you can see um, that that's uh, 142 hertz but it doesn't really change frequency at all with the capacitance that we're actually testing. So, you know, every multimeter uses its own little secret source. Every multimeter chipset's different, everything like that. So you can probe your multimeter and have a look for yourself and they'll have different test signal levels and they'll have different biases and everything else. But anyway, I'm just showing you that they all work uh, differently. Now you should know uh, your capacitive uh, impedance formula. XC is one on two times pi times F times C. And then they can calculate uh, the capacitance. You can rearrange that to calculate the capacitance. Well, uh, you should also know that the uh, impedance formula for an inductor is exactly the same as that, except it's not the reciprocal. It's just 2 times pi times F times L. So what you can actually do, because there is actually a frequency uh, component in there, you can actually press your multimeter into service to measure inductors. It's not perfect, but you can actually do it. And this one over or reciprocal measurement mode, as it's called, is uh, used on some multimeters like the Fluke 87.5 here uh, for measuring large value resistors. It's actually got a nano Siemens mode. So I'm measuring a uh, 10 mega ohm resistor at the moment, but it, we can actually go into nano Siemens mode here. And if we hook on, this is a 10 gig ohm resistor. It's a bit touchy because it's a really high value. We can actually measure that. And it's 0.11 or point, <laughs> so it's 0.1 nano Siemens. And if you get the reciprocal of that one on 0.1 nano gives you the 10 gig ohms. And that's how the nano Siemens mode works. Well, you can kind of sort of do a similar thing with inductors on your capacitance range on your multimeters. It's not terrific, but you can get it to work. And you can see serious changes in frequency as I change the range on the meter here, uh, frequency and amplitudes and maybe offsets as well and stuff. So yeah, um, each meter is going to be quite different, but there you go.
Let's go to Dave Calc here and I'll show you how it's all going to work. It's not that intuitive and it's all uh, range based as well because as I uh, showed the different ranges have different uh, frequencies and whatnot so it depends on the range you're on. So one, one milli Henry inductor is actually going to read one milli farad if you've got it on the, or it should in theory um, if you've got it on the uh, milli farad range but it gets weird for the other ones it gets a bit non-intuitive. 2.2 uh, milli what you've got to do is you've got to take out the milli there okay so assuming you're on the milli range on your meter that matches this range like this that the inductor you're trying to measure then it's uh 2.2 you invert 2.2 on a calculator and you get 0.55 and then you just keep the units the same so 2.2 milli henry's should in theory read as 0.455 millifarads or uh, 455 microfarads and so on all the way down and if you're on uh, micro henry's range then uh, you need to be on microfarads range over here and you may have to use a thousand of uh, multiple if you're on the wrong range and you get the reading here anyway uh, let's have it let's see if this actually works i'll just uh, auto range it here hopefully we'll get the right range i'm on 150 milli henry's here and will it actually will it actually work uh, 150 millihenries, uh, we should be getting uh, 6, 6 6.6 microfarads, 6.1. So the lower that is, the higher um, it's going to be in the inductance. So that's reading slightly over. We can get the confuser out. So we want to convert this to millifarads to match the range. So 6182 like this, and you invert that, and we get 161 millihenries. Um, there you go. That's not too far off. So let's see what the UNI-T reads. 6.18 we'll get in. Is it going to do the same range? 6.31. There you go. That's not too shabby at all. And well, let's do, choose say 47 milli Henry's. Uh, what do we expect? Uh, 21 Mike. We're getting uh, 23 Mike. There you go. And we can swap that back. Come on, you can do it. 23.5. That's good enough for Australia. That gives you a pretty decent indication. Let's try 10 milli. 91.3. Okay, we expected 100 there. Well, our inductor might be a little bit out. 90.3. There you go. That's all right. And if we compare the actual uh, values here with the proper LCR meter, I'm measuring it at 1 kilohertz here. The uh, 6.8 milli Henry is actually uh, 7.3, and the 10 milli Henry is actually, well, that's pretty close to uh, bang on 10, and 47 milli is uh, 50.8. So, you know, there's some errors in there, but meh, there you go, 106, but, you know, it, it's nothing doing really. All right, let's try a 220 micro Henry uh, SMD inductor here. Let's give it a bow with our LCR meter first. There you go, 233 micro Henry's. All right, let's try the same thing with our 121 GW. And get on there, you bastard. Ah, come on. Easier to probe on the bottom, I think. <laughs> there we go. Four point, let, let's call it 4.9 nanofarads. Get the confuser out here, 4.9. Um, it, we leave the uh, units off, so we invert that. That'd be 204 micro, because you've got to shift it back that way. Um, th th that's not too far off, is it? That's all right. Not too shabby. Well, try the UNI-T, 4.84. Let's try the Fluke 87 here. 5.3, that puts it uh, a bit lower. So I'll leave it up to those playing along at home to uh, you try it on your own meter and see how low you can get. Now on the lower uh, value, like really low in value inductors, of course, uh, you know, you're know you getting pretty close to a short circuit. So uh, you don't expect this to work. And sure enough, it doesn't work that well. But I won't go through like all the whole ranges and everything. But you can use this like to measure um, at least reasonably sized value inductors and get a like at least a usable indication. You've just got to have your noggin on when you use your uh, confuser here uh, to make sure you don't, don't, don't get your moon units mixed up. But yeah, you can actually um, get reasonable indications of inductor values. Who knew multimeter for measuring inductors? Neat, neat little trick, doesn't work in all cases, but hey, give it a try at home.
If you like that video, found it useful, please give it a big thumbs up and uh, leave your results down in the comments down below to see how your meter fares on what uh, different uh, values and uh, types of inductors and frequency hooking up the scope, all that sort of jazz. Fascinating, huh? Catch you next time. Thank <laughs> you.